Hey, my name is Liz. I'm a member of the clinical education team at Iconotes, and this video is um, part of our basic series. It's designed for people who are working either in the inpatient setting or the outpatient setting and are not really familiar with the program. It's going to give you an overall of some different workflows before we dig down into individual types of notes. So as you can see here, we're in the chart room. This was covered in a previous video, and I've typed in the name of my patient, Elizabeth Taylor. And I'm going to leave my chart room now, and I'm going to go forward and click on this little icon here. And it's going to take me right to the chart face for Elizabeth Taylor. This is pretty typical as to what an active chart face will look like for a patient, either in an inpatient or an outpatient setting. You can see here that I have a little um, picture of Elizabeth. That I've uploaded. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. That can come in handy. If you're in the outpatient setting, you won't see this area. This is specific to inpatient, and we'll talk about this in more detail when we talk about inpatient notes specifically. But right now, let's take a look at this chart. This is an active chart. The chart is managed right here, active, inactive, or pending. I know it's an active note because, or an active chart because it has Elizabeth's name in bold and blue. It has her medical record number and her date of birth, and it tells me how old she is. <clears throat> if I were to click this and make it inactive, her name would be grayed out, and there would be a line through it. That wouldn't be a problem. In Iconotes, you only have one chart per patient. So if she leaves your clinic, or she leaves your hospital, or she leaves your IOP setting, and you decide to inactivate her chart and uh, store it in the chart room in a, in a separate drawer, when she comes back in, it's very simple to click onto her chart face and to just reactivate it. OK. Probably the most important window or portal that we have in, in this portion of the program is right here. And I'm outlining it. And it continues all, it has all clinical records for Elizabeth in chronological order. And it has the initials of the person that made the notes. If I come down here a little further, you might be able to find some other initials besides my initials. Let's see here. If I scroll down here, you can see JR for Janina Russian. This tells me that Janina did an individual psychotherapy note, <clears throat> but it's an unfinished note, so she needs to go back in and finish up her workflow. From the top here, you can see that on 12, 14, <clears throat> 2015, um, EL, that's Elizabeth MD or Dr. Liz, created a progress note in the psychiatric clinic as opposed to a psychiatric hospital or an IOP setting. And this note has been completed. Notice that it, I have a green stripe over here associated with this note for the work area. Green in Iconotes means that I have access to any of these notes because I, Dr. Liz, own these records. Okay. If I scroll down here, I'm going to see other records. I'm, as I scroll down, I'm going back in time. And I'm going to see records that have been made by my um, colleagues. For example, and here we have one made by my nursing colleague, Liz RN. And it was a complete evaluation done in a psychiatric hospital by the nurse. Dr. Liz cannot go into this work area for nurse Liz Lobeo. It's um, turned pink for me. It's telling me, hey, doctor, you're not the nurse that created this note. You can read her compiled note, but you can't go back into her work area and alter her note. The only exception to this is if Dr. Lobeo was assigned in settings and directories as a supervisor for this particular note. Then he or she would be able to go into the work areas, alter the note if they want to, just like they owned it, and sign it or co-sign it. Okay, I'm going to come down here, and as we're going down this list here, we're scrolling back in time. You can see I have a lot of unfinished notes. And I'm going to take you down here to the very first note that was ever made. And if you look up here, it says um, sh under the show all area here, I actually am showing 55 of 55 notes. So I have 55 notes in here made by various members of the team. This first note was made by Dr. Dr. Liz, 
It's a complete evaluation by the MD, and it was done in an outpatient or psychiatric setting. It could have easily said inpatient setting. And me, Dr. Liz, can go back in here and update this note if I want to, even at this late date. Now, this area works just like a paper chart. So that if you flip through a paper chart and you're a member of the medical or the nursing or the social worker team, you can read everybody else's compiled note. You just can't go into their work area and alter the note unless you are assigned um, that particular note. I hope that makes sense to each one of you. So everybody can read everybody else's note, but only the person that made the note can go back into the note and make corrections unless that person has a supervisor. Let's take a look at this area over here on the left. This is a read-only portion of ICA notes. You can't actually type any information in here, but when you generate a complete evaluation, it doesn't matter if you're an inpatient or outpatient, doctor, nurse, social worker, family counselor, licensed addiction counselor, when you generate a complete evaluation or a particular progress note, information from that note is going to push out into certain areas of the program, most especially into this area right here, all the way down. So we're always going to have a copy of the most recent diagnosis or diagnoses for this patient. If the patient has a treatment plan set up, we're going to see this um, the problem list. Right now there's just one problem here, substance abuse. Current medications that are due today or being given today are shown right here. This list can be printed out if a family member wants to see it or the patient wants to see it. That's fine. You can print that out if you'd like to do that. We have an area here for adverse drug reactions and allergies. This is an active list um, of ADRs and food allergies in Iconotes. And down here at the bottom, we have an area called patient notes and risk factors. And as you build, especially your complete evaluations, the program's going to pick up high-risk areas about your patient and populate them not only here, but at the bottom of every single person's progress note. So you're going to be able to see that from the bottom of your note if you choose to. In addition to that, any member of the team can come down inside the note and add something. So for example, it says your history of medication noncompliance. The program actually picked up this for me and pushed it out. But when I got to the bottom of Elizabeth's chart, I typed in that she has a history of cutting when anxious. She had told me that. So this is a nice field. Everybody knows what's going on with your patient, what her high risk factors are right now. This can be updated by any member of the team in any note moving forward. Let's take a minute and look at the tabs that are moving across the top or across the top of the chart face. You might be wondering actually why we call this a chart face. It's supposed to look like one of those accordion folders that you get at Staples. Maybe you can see that, that are brown with the tabs across the top and they expand. And we have a lot of information about Elizabeth or any of our patients on the face of this chart. Okay. So if we come over here, you can always go into the demographic area. Anytime you go into the demographic area, it doesn't matter which tab you go into. If you wanted to add, you know, contact information or you wanted to add another family member or let's say the patient didn't know their uh, social security number when they came in, you can always come in here. It looks like somebody's already added it. Maybe it was added incorrectly. You could make a, you could actually change it at any time to say, hey, it was supposed to end with a five instead of a six. And then once you're finished updating the demographic area, you can click continue and the program will always take you back to the page in the program that you were last working on. So this is a flare, very fluid interchange that we have here. Okay, you can pull up the most recent complete evaluation. It will show you, and it's probably gonna be this one right here, the one by the MD. Oh, it was a biopsychosocial assessment by a licensed psychologist associate. And I can read this note from right here. To go back to the patient's chart face or to the chart room, it's in the upper left-hand corner. We're going to go back to the chart face. Notice that we had the little chart icon here to lead us, whereas for the chart room, we have the little um, cabinets, filing cabinets. Let's go back to the chart face. And I'm going to come over here, and we can pull up a most recent progress note. 
And this one happened to be a progress note that was done by the doctor, and it can be read, and you can see that it was signed. There's another way to drill down and find particular notes here. I'm showing all 55 notes in this area right now, but if I wanted to click here and show just, let me see here, just my nursing notes, for example, inpatient or outpatient, I can click on nursing notes. Some of them are called administrative notes. This is particular to the inpatient setting, but you can see most of these are called nursing notes. And I can go, and the further back, the further down I go, the further back in time I'm looking at. The most recent nursing note would be at the top. By default, I'm showing seven of 55 notes. I like to leave this on show all notes. I will show you one other area of interest here. You have the option to individualize the name of any progress note or complete evaluation that you make in the program. And you can also sort by those names that you've given the notes. So, for example, here I made one treatment plan, and I called it the Master Treatment Plan in capitals. So I can search here, pull it up, and there it is. It was from 10-7-2015. By default, it's a nice idea to leave this on show all so that when your colleagues log in here, they don't think that they've lost a note.